Welcome to the support videos for workload automation video series. In this video, we will show an example of how you can set a control M variable so the value is the last day of the current month or also the last day of the previous month. This might be something you can set to then use for a different job or process later on. Here's a quick demo on how to set up these jobs from the workload automation GUI. So here in the planning domain of uh, the workload automation GUI, I've got a workspace open with a couple of jobs to show you some examples. This first one will be the last day of the previous month. So if we look at the details, I've got some variables set up here. Make it a little bit easier for you to see. The thing to note is the order of the variables is very important, as well as the syntax of the variables. So the first one I've defined is this one called first day. It's going to use a couple of system variables for the year and the month, and then I'm setting 01 for the first day of the month. The next variable is going to build upon that, and it's going to be the previous day, which will be the last day of the previous month. So I'm, I'm using the calc date function to take the first variable I've set and subtracting one day from that. Then the final variable then is the last day of the previous month. So I'm taking then a substring of the previous variable starting at position seven for the last two characters. Let's take a look at the other job, the last day of the current month. If I double click on that to pull up the properties, um, you'll notice in both of the jobs I'm going to echo these commands out. So I'll show you the actual variables as they appear in the monitoring domain when I run the jobs. So again, let's make this a little bit easier to view. So this one's a little bit more complex, but it uses similar uh, functionality and similar logic here. So I'm going to set a variable, this first one, again, using the year and the month, but this time to the last day uh, that is going to occur in every possible month out there, which is the 28th. And then I'm going to take seven days from that because I know that will for sure put me into the next month. Uh, I'll take a substring of that because I want to eliminate that day. I'm going to take then that variable and concatenate 01 on, meaning the first day of the month. And then similar to the previous job, I'm going to do a calculation to subtract one. And then again, take a substring for the last day of the current month the last seven, up, up to seven characters, two characters after that. So let's take a look now in monitoring. So if I look at actual executions of these jobs, if I, if I right click and go output, for this particular job, we see it's set the first day to August 1st, um, happens to be August 22nd today. Now I get the next variable is the last day of the previous month, the 31st, and then I just took the substring of that to get the 31st only, just that day. And then similarly for the last day of the current month, I get the output. And this one has more variables in it, if you recall. So we've got the 28th, because again, I know that that is a valid day every possible month. I added seven to get a known day in the next month. I stripped off that day, so I've only got the year and the month. I added the 01 back, so now I can do the calculation like I did before. And that calculation gives me the previous day, but now that is the current month. And then I just took the substring of that. All right, so knowledge article 105443 is uh, the reference article here and, and talks about the same information and the same example here. So hopefully that was helpful for you to, in, in the specific examples, get the last day of the current month and the previous month, but also kind of give you some good examples for how to manipulate dates and, and do some calculations related to variables. All right, thank you, and let us know how the Control-M Workload Automation Support Team can help.